But if you want to make the money, you have to scale larger. What's going on guys? Um, so tonight, I actually have a question that I'm going to be answering, which I'm pretty stoked about. To be completely honest with you, um, I've had a lot of interaction on this channel recently, and this is really the first time that I've seen as many new subscribers coming on here, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, I also have the hiccups. So what I want to say is that I've got somebody who left a message, um, Negrishi. So Negrishi says, <clears throat> man, I'm having trouble trying to decide if I should invest in real estate. My boss is like a friend who's willing to help me get into it, but I'm 21 and I really want to make my hobby a living. We're going to get into that in a second. I really want to make my hobby a living, uh, which is being a mechanic. And I want to go to my home country and get a degree and prepare to do it right. Um, but he considers himself good for both vehicles and houses. The issue is that he's got a boss who is very good in investing in real estate. Um, I'm not sure if that means just building new houses or flipping houses or what it is. Um, but for some reasons, his boss lost uh, the success of which he had gotten and he's now chasing it again. And what Negrishi says is that he's in his 50s and he only seems that he wants economic freedom like the rest of us, but all he sees is an old man chasing something and not living anything, which is pretty much the broken record of what we've got going on in our society. And that's why Negrishi's having trouble because real estate seems like a fast way to get money or a relatively easy way because he's got basically a mentor in the space to make money um, and be free, but the problem is is that he's not passionate about it. At least that's what I'm getting from your message. And it seems like you wanna live a life full of passion, which is the absolute goal. So um, he says that he obviously would love to go back to his country and how can he become successful while still doing what he's passionate about in life and making money doing so. <clears throat> so I appreciate the interaction on the channel and I actually have a really good answer for you. So I'm going to give you the exact same advice that I gave an old buddy of mine back in the day. Now, if you go into real estate, yeah, there is a huge chance that you're going to become successful and you're going to be able to make it and you'll be financially free. But there's also a big chance that you're going to basically chase the dragon and you're not going to enjoy yourself anywhere near as much as you should in life and at the end of the day when you're just going for a paycheck that is when it's difficult to get out of bed um, in the morning that is when it's very very hard to sustain and keep going um, that is what I did with my old business uh, trusted relations computer clinic I have zero passion for technology I don't care about it but I built an entire business around the model of knowing that I can make this much money getting into the technological arenas. Uh, and I happen to be good at it. <clears throat> but just because you're good at something doesn't mean that you should pursue it. So, I know what it's like to try to go and become successful at something that you just don't give a shit about. And it's going to be very easy to run out of steam while doing so. However... I have continued to my entire life ride motorcycles and think deep, right? Those are the two things in my life that I've always, always done. I've thought very deep about things and I've always ridden motorcycles and been into the crazy lifestyles. So that's why I'm trying to uh, move into doing more with these channels. So I especially appreciate all the interactions. Now, you said that your hobby is mechanic work. <clears throat> so. In terms of that, <clears throat> how could you turn your mechanic work into, take your passion for mechanics and turn it into a viable income for yourself? Not just an income, but something that makes you successful, which I'm sure if you've looked into it, the kind of success that you're talking about typically doesn't come with a mechanic's salary. Now you said that you're 21 years old in here, 
and you obviously have a long time to go. So this is my advice for you, my man. There was an old buddy of mine, um, and he had a bus. And this bus was given to him, kind of gifted, right? This bus was gutted. And what my advice to him was, because he was a phenomenal mechanic as well, but he wasn't making a lot of money, and to be quite honest with you, he was a felon, and it was very difficult for him to find uh, work. Now, what I offered him is, why don't you take that bus and why don't you put a ton of mechanic equipment into it? Because when you have a bus with the, the giant um, space, physical, the physical space within the bus, you could fill that with a lot of tools. You could put drills and, I mean, wrenches, um, everything that you need, the giant chests, you could put um, compressors, air compressors in there, you could hold sets of tires, you could do a lot with that bus. So I broke down a whole business plan for him back in the day of what he could do to actually take that bus and create a service-based niche for himself that is currently unfulfilled, or at least I haven't seen it. So what my advice to him, and I'm going to relay it into your situation. Now, you're 21 years old, which means you have a ton of time. You've got a lot of drive, and you wouldn't be ending up on some of my videos on here if you weren't looking for you know, financial freedom or to build your life or to do the things that you want to do, right? Now, if you want to take this hobby, I would recommend, why don't you stockpile all the money that you've got for right now? You could find investors, but you're really just going to get friends and family, you know, giving you a loan at this point to help you out. But why don't you find something similar to a bus or a van or something a little larger than just a, a short like painter's van, something a little bit larger than that. And why don't you line it with tools? Why don't you stock everything that you could possibly use to work on a vehicle with? And what you're going to do is you're going to make it look nice, you know, whatever, get, get it all looking good, nicey nice, right? You wanna be able to present yourself well. Um, you wanna take this vehicle and you want to start to market yourself as a mechanic on wheels. And what I mean by that is that one of the biggest problems that everybody has with going to mechanics is the waiting time. How long until my car is out of the garage? Oh, well, we have this many people ahead of you for the bays and we can't swap your tire. We can't do this yet. You know, it's going to be an hour. It's going to be three hours. It's going to be whatever. But what if you could drive to people's houses place of residence or their places of business, what if you could drive out to anywhere that somebody was at that time and you could fix their vehicle for them on site because you had a traveling garage? Now, <clears throat> typically, I don't know where you live, but typically where I live around, mechanics get anywhere from $80 to 100 and something per hour. Now, you could still charge the same thing or charge more because you would be providing a premium service. Therefore, you could charge a premium value for what you're bringing to the table, uh, a premium price for the value of what you're bringing to the table. Now, if you were to do that, I guarantee you, you would get people, you would get a lot of clients because by you giving, giving that much convenience to people, <clears throat> driving out to their houses when, for example, Right now, I'm sitting at my house and my truck outside, let's say the four-wheel drive was broken, so the motor underneath the four-wheel drive truck is, is shot and I need that replaced. Well, it was a snowstorm recently. I'm warm and cozy in my house. The last thing I wanna do is drive out there and get this work done. Well, if I knew that there was a mechanic in the area who was certified or whatever it is that you need to become to feel comfortable um, in being a mechanic, if I knew that there was somebody in the area that I could call up and they will drive to my place of residence and they'll jack up my truck right in my driveway or, or in the street or wherever it is and they had a traveling mechanics van or bus or whatever it is and they were going to work on that on, on my vehicle outside and I wouldn't have to leave this house and I could just sit up here and play video games or do whatever it is that I'm going to do. You know how much people would pay for that convenience? So let's take that a step further. 
Let's say that you're able to work on people's vehicles on site. Now, already you're making over $100 an hour because your overhead is going to be very nominal, very minimal, once you actually have um, the, the, the setup going, right? So you have the vehicle, you have the tools, and that's all you need. Because beyond that, a lot of word of mouth, a lot of uh, social media marketing, which you can learn, you can look up courses online on how to social media market, or if you're really curious, I mean, I could make another video about that, but you, there's a lot out there. Um, all your overhead revolves around your traveling mechanics garage, right? So your, your profit margins would be quite large doing this kind of a job. So let's take it a little further. So you're already making $100 an hour. Now let's say you start to get a good name in the community and maybe you start to pair up with certain businesses in the area where you can offer them services on anything that they need and employee discounts for any of their employees and you can drive right to their place of business and you can work on their employees vehicles right there for them right obviously you know you could you could even do this under the table for a little bit once you get to a certain level and then you know do everything above board make sure it's something that you want to do but that would allow you to take your hobby and turn it into a business of which to start to get some money together. Now, the kind of money you're talking about in, in your post that you, you left me on here um, of possibly getting into real estate sounds like you want some residual flow of passive income and you want to hit some levels of, of perceived wealth, right? Okay. So let's think about this and take this a little further. Let's say to make things super simple, you're, you're charging $100 an hour. Well, if you're charging $100 an hour and you've got a traveling mechanics van that goes out there and you're a one-man job, well, why don't you start to use your relationships that you probably have, you probably know some good mechanics in your life, and why don't you start to hire them? So what you can start to do is you can start to book jobs for your mechanics to go out there and do. And if you're paying your mechanics, I don't know what you'd want to pay them, but $30, $40, $50 an hour, where your profit margin, you'd still have a profit margin. But if you're paying them that per hour and they're out there working, well, now you're not exchanging your time for money. Again, let's say you're making about $100 an hour. You're not exchanging your hour for $100. You're now exchanging an hour for, let's say, $50, right? But you can exchange multiple amounts of hours for that per hour of yours. So what I'm getting at is that build yourself to a certain point and then get a second vehicle that you can stock with one or two, maybe a team of mechanics is the best way to do it. I'm not sure this would be your business, your scalability, you figure out how you want to do it. But if you take a, a, a second vehicle right and you stock it all up with the tools that are necessary along the way you'll you'll realize which tools are necessary and which are not now you've got you start to build into having more and more and more traveling mechanics for whatever company name you want to do right so eventually you end up with a fleet of mechanics on wheels mechanics on wheels driving around right now you start to just line up jobs and you start to have, you know, maybe a website designed, maybe a social media following, you know, where people, you have your set hours. Maybe you have 24 seven service. Maybe on these vehicles, you have a winch to pull people out in the, in the winter time. These are whatever services you're going to come up with. So once you have the fleet of vehicles going, oh, let me back up real quick. You can use simple things like eBay or, or you can upsell to go pick up parts for the client when it's needed. So for example, if you're at my house and you're working on my truck outside and I start talking to you and you tell me that it's not just the motor that's bad, there's another bearing over here, da da da. Well, if you can go out and offer to go out and drive to, I don't know, the closest auto zone or the closest wherever that's gonna have that part and then come back, that's another added premium service that you're gonna you're gonna be able to offer people, right? Now you've got a fleet of vehicles, you have all these services that nobody else is offering, and now you kinda of get to sit back and you get to scale the business larger, right? 
you get to do more marketing, you get to um, utilize social media as much as possible, go to networking events, join a BNI or a Chamber of Commerce or some of these places, act as the business owner, not necessarily the mechanic. I know you say it's your hobby and you want to turn your hobby into a passion. You can always be the one to go out in one of those trucks. But if you want to make the money, you have to scale larger. Um, you know, beyond that, you can, I mean, you can offer all different kinds of services with it. And one of the things that you want to do is create some form of a subscription based recurring payment that could be free rush service, right? They get, they get to go to the front of the line, right? So a subscription based service month after month after month, you could open up like a PayPal account and you can get subscription based services and you can have um, people pay you monthly to provide a service or to provide a insurance, right? If they get stuck on the side of the road, free towing. If they get, if they need an oil change, they get a discount. If they call you, they get free rush service. People will pay for this, but a lot of them won't utilize it. So now you've got set income coming in that you can count on month after month after month. $19.99 seems to be a good balance for that. It's not enough that it bothers people so they're in a rush to cancel it. And it's, it's, it's less enough that people typically keep it on their credit cards coming out because they think in the back of their head, I might need that one day, I might need that one day. But typically months go by before they exercise whatever the subscription based piece is that they're, that they're doing for you. But in the back of their head, they feel more secure having that. You could offer subscription based services for doing so. Um, the sky's the limit, my man. Uh, you know, really this world is just about thinking outside of the box and just asking yourself, how would I do this? So if you want to take your hobby, which is being a mechanic and not just make a living from it, but make the kind of money that you're talking about with doing real estate and such, that would be my best advice for you. Get a van, get something, stock it up, go out there, be willing to do what other people are not, which is drive to the client, give them value added services to be able to charge a premium because you're providing a premium product, a premium um, uh, service value, right? And uh, away you go, man, build your wealth. So um, I hope that helps you and uh, you know, definitely, definitely leave a comment if I didn't answer the question you know, as good as possible for you, but I think the same advice I gave my buddy back in the day should help you out too, man. Um, so get to it. I'll talk to you. Bye.